This is NFL Daily by Chat Sports. Before we get into today's show, we have a company-wide challenge. We want to set the mark for most comments by one individual person on a video, not including any live shows. That's a little bit too easy. One person has commented 41 times. We are going to give a shout-out on Wednesday's live show to the person who sets the new mark. So head down to the comment section and flood it with comments. You can just type in me if you want the shout-out. Now, I think there will be many of you trying to win that shout-out, so you want to go way above and beyond the 41, but take advantage. Head down there. Let's set the mark. Spam the comment section right now. Just type in me, type in chat, type in your favorite team. Whatever you want it to be, any comment will count. So you can just count from 1 to 100 if you want to. Get in the comments right now. Welcome into NFL Daily. I am Tom Downey. Some fresh news and rumors for you guys. And we begin with a... Well, this one actually isn't, I guess, that fresh. It's a repeat of what we did last year. Aaron Rodgers trade once again. Uh, Schefter, Rappaport, Peter King, all the big media heads, at least insiders, I say, have floated the possibility of a Rodgers off-season trade because the more things change, the more they somehow stay the same. Rodgers, at this point, is not committed to anything, but at his age, at his contract, there are some complications from this point. Schefter said it's a possibility. Rappaport said, you know, Green Bay likes to have in Jordan Love. I don't know if I believe that. They got the right package. They could do a deal. We will talk about the Rodgers trade package later on here. But there is this part to acknowledge, too. He wasn't as good last season. Touchdowns fell off a cliff. Yards, yards per attempt all plummeted. Accuracy dipped a little bit. Interceptions dropped a, a pretty decent amount as well, which all do raise concerns. It was a way higher interception year. They, they, they were in position just to beat the Lions, the team he's owned, and, and he didn't play that well, and they ended up losing. And there's also this part. The cap hit, if you pick up his option, is super affordable. But what you end up doing is you're paying him a cheap amount this year, a reasonable amount in 2024, but 2025 becomes super expensive. Even if he retires, it's all guaranteed. Like, that option bonus does complicate things at a pretty big level, uh, which it's not as easy as the 2023 cap it suggests. You're committing to Rodgers in what is basically a player option for the next couple years. That, that gets a little bit dicey. So prediction time. More on this coming up here in a little bit. Will the Green Bay Packers trade Aaron Rodgers? Y for yes, N for no. It's the pinned comment on today's video. So if the ad break comes here on YouTube, head down there. Y for yes, N for no. And remember to keep spamming the comments so you can get the shout out on Wednesday's live show. Now, when it comes to trade value, Peter King of NBC Sports has an idea. His guess, and I'll emphasize guess, since it's trades, weird stuff happens, right? Look at Amari Cooper and Trace Claypool and DeAndre Hopkins, right? His guess is it's two, at least two first-round picks for Rodgers in a trade, and that is a lot given his age and contract. Now, Peter King specifically mentioned the Jets as a team that might be the, uh, the fit there. It's also worth mentioning that Adam Schefter allegedly said on ESPN today that uh, Packers would only do an AFC trade. So now you're cutting out half the teams that could potentially have interest, and now you're really kind of dialing back your potential options and the value, and things get a little bit dicey there. And two firsts is a lot, given his age and contract. So we will have Aaron Rodgers' trade destinations for you later today, right here on Chat Sports. Make sure you're subscribed, youtube.com slash at Chat Sports. Let's move now to Tom Brady. He has not yet made up his mind over his future. He cussed out his podcast host, Jim Gray, uh, when Jim Gray asked him about it. Also worth mentioning that Brady made a decision last year and then changed his mind a month later. And Brady will be a free agent this offseason, which does start to complicate things. Here's what Brady said, asked, hey, you know, what's, what's your plan? He goes, if I knew what I was going to F-bomb deleted do, I would have already another F-bomb deleted done it. I'm taking it a day at a time. So no real insight there from Brady. We'll come back to this more in depth. But first, are you wasting money on subscriptions? 80% of people have subscriptions. 
they forgot about. Maybe it's an unused Amazon Prime account or a Hulu account that just never gets streamed anymore. There's this great app that I use that helps me track all of my expenses, and because of it, I no longer waste money on subscriptions that I don't even use or want. And you may have heard of it. It's called Rocket Money, formerly known as Truebill. The app shows all your subscriptions in one place and then cancels for you whatever you don't still want. They can find stuff you didn't know you were paying for. Maybe even you were double charged for a subscription. Because let's be honest, we're not checking if it was. We just know, okay, it's going to be around this amount each two weeks, month, whatever it is. And ah, that's probably about right. You're not actually checking because no one does. We, we ain't got time for that. Rocket Money will take care of it for you. To cancel a subscription on Rocket Money, all you do is press cancel. And they take care of the rest. Get rid of useless subscriptions with Rocket Money now. Go to rocketmoney.com slash NFL daily. Could seriously save you hundreds per year. That's rocketmoney.com slash NFL daily. Links in the comments and the description of today's show. Let's go back to Tom Brady now, as promised. Much like Rodgers, it's just not what it once was. Uh, Brady played awesome in 2020, still good in 2021, and perhaps in part because of the offensive line concerns up front, he just wasn't the same guy this year. Uh, I think there are still plenty of teams that would have interest in adding Tom Brady. Here are six that we did a previous video on, Brady Destinations. Uh, the, the Raiders make so much sense to me. Josh McDaniels, go out west. Uh, end your career in Vegas in, or in Florida. It's kind of that's, that's what that's what people do, right? They go to Florida and Vegas. You already did the Florida thing. Now let's let's go to Vegas. I think the Raiders are the top team, and not on the list, but also fair. Just going to Fox Sports, calling it a career, and making also a bunch of money uh, just being a commentator could work out pretty decently. So prediction time: Where will Tom Brady play next year? You can let me know in the comment section. Raiders, Fox is a, is a viable option too. Back to New England, the Bucks still vote in the comments right now. We mentioned the Raiders. How about a Derek Carr trade possibility? The trade rumors, the surprise of nobody, continue to pick up. And that certainly makes sense because we're getting very close to the deadline here uh, for a Derek Carr move in some capacity. They have until February 15th. At that point, about $33 million of his, his full base salary next year and 7.5 of the 2024 salary become fully guaranteed. So, you, so you're committing over $40 million guaranteed if you do not cut or trade Derek Carr on February 15th. That timeline is, is rapidly approaching. Teams might have interest in a Rodgers or Brady over Derek Carr, and that might, might, not, might not be made by then. So the Raiders are trying to find a trade partner, but teams could slow play this. They could go, you know what? You've got two weeks, I dare you to, or three weeks. I dare you to find a trade partner. I dare you. Maybe they will. Maybe they won't. Here's what Jeremy Fowler of ESPN reported the other day. Teams I talk to expect a variation of the Saints, the Commanders, the Jets to all inquire. And I'm told some teams have already made some early initial calls to the Raiders. It would be weird if they hadn't and if the Raiders weren't calling teams. It'd be, it would be very strange because he will not be back in Vegas. I've got a longer list with varying degrees of interest. The Jets, of course, are in desperate need of a quarterback. It's not Zach Wilson. The Commanders, and we'll see if they actually ride with Sam Howell there. The Colts are on there. I don't know. Maybe they want to go back down to that quarterback road. Panthers, Falcons could try something. The Saints were, of course, mentioned. Houston probably goes QB1. Giants, if they lose Daniel Jones, but that'd be free agency. Same with Tennessee, Tampa. I do wonder if a trade goes down because of the regression this year from Derek Carr. You had Devontae Adams. You didn't have Hunter Renfro, uh, Darren Waller all year long, but those numbers aren't bad, but they're not exactly eye-popping either. But he's still a top 32 quarterback at worst. I mean, even the most anti-Carr people are like, yeah, he's top 32. He's probably going top 25, if not top 15. So there would be interest, but do teams want to move assets and $40 million guaranteed the next two years. You know, worst case, I guess, you're paying $40 million for one year. You, you probably would redo the deal, bring the cap it down, whatever. But that's not a, it's not a cut-and-dry scenario. So what will the Raiders do with Derek Carr? They ain't keeping him. K for or, – or, I, I messed it up. Sorry. T for trade, C for cut. That's wrong. Just 
listen to, to what I say, not what I put on screen. T for trade, C for cut in the comments se section. I'm an idiot. All right, let's move to Ezekiel Elliott on that front there. Elliott, uh, according to support from the Dallas Morning News, they wasted no time on this one, nor should they. Uh, he is willing to take a pay cut, stay in Dallas, which, yeah. Because uh, he ain't going to back on his current deal. There's no way, there's a 0% chance the Cowboys are like, ah, yes, we should simply keep Zeke with what he's at. Uh, he is not close to what he once was. I know there are still truthers out there. The touchdowns have been have been valuable. I, I, I get it. He's, he helped you out in fantasy this year. Uh, we're talking about a guy who averages about four yards per carry the past three seasons. That's not that great. That's replacement level. And look at what he did down the stretch. The last six games, 2.6 yards per carry. And on a DC, he got 82 carries. It's like he's not he's, like, he's, like, he's not getting the ball 10 times a game, whatever. Like he's averaging still. 14-ish carries per game. That's a pretty big sample size. And he was awful, and he can't catch anymore. Zeke will not be back at his current contract. There is a 0% chance of that. It simply does not make a lick of sense. But you have options if you are Dallas. His cap hit this upcoming year, $16.7 million. That's, that's, you got to get rid of a, a, a move that this point over one. That makes sense. Maybe 1.7 is fine. Cut him pre-June 1st, you only save 4.86. Post-June 1st, when you can spread the dead money out, you save 10.9. If you bring Zeke's base salary down to the vet minimum, you save 9.74. And if I ran the Cowboys, which, hey, Jerry, I'm, I'm available, that's what I would do. All right, look, Zeke, we'll, we'll, we'll still give you a little bit extra money. But you got to come down to the vet minimum. And we're going to take that savings, give it to Pollard, and uh, upgrade elsewhere on our roster because we're not paying you. We're, we're trying to save money, and you're not good enough to be anything more than a clear-cut RB2. And you can make the argument it's maybe still a net negative when it's all said and done. So we'll see about Zeke, but I think a cap hit or pay cut are your only viable options if you are the Dallas Cowboys. Thank you.